I wasn't there, so I don't know. But mm. here's another thing that I considered. Is it possible that your laboratory was located on one of the planet's ley lines or near one of the planet's ley lines so that that helped the effect that you were trying to create? Is it possible Yeah, that's a to... really, really good question. I'll hold it right there. Uh, John, uh, what about that? Is it true that it might work in some places and not other places? No, it seemed to uh, work in all different locations. Uh, there's about five different locations where the laboratory was in uh, the greater Vancouver area. And there was no difference. It worked, period. Yeah, it worked. A lot of people are curious about these le magnetic ley lines and think uh, things like this are more likely at those points. But uh, maybe this is an effect that just can be done All right. Hold on, John. We'll be right back from the high desert. I'm Art Bell. All right, once again, John Hutchinson. And, uh, John, let's uh, go out of the country and say hi. You're on the air on the international line. Where are you calling from, please? Hello? 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 Oh, hi, Art. Um, this is uh, Frude calling from Trondheim in Norway. Oh, you're the one that fast blasted me. Uh-huh, that's yeah. right. Um, hi, John. How are you doing? Um, I corresponded with you, uh, oh, say, around uh, 91, 92. I don't know if re you remember. Oh, I would probably um, have your letters in my files somewhere. Oh, great. I just um, vaguely remember something now. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. I corresponded with you and uh, George Hathaway also. That's um, right. And um, you said you, um, you didn't uh, do much uh, documentation of your, uh, your research. But actually, I'd say um, the uh, correspondent that you um, you did around those years actually serves your uh, documentation. The uh, documentation? That yes, I sent you. you said you you didn't publish much of your research and and. Uh, no, not uh, my, not me. No, um, other scientists um, publish it a lot. I have, I must have at least a cubic yard of solid material so uh, you're actually then uh, <laughs> you are the the demonstrator I'm the demonstrator the showman but the other scientists seem to want to uh, make notes and write stories and books and they're the ones that have been documenting it for you all right I see yeah and um, uh, John I wondered if I could ask you something mm -hmm. um, in my uh, correspondent with you um, I um, discussed the Kalski frost effect. I believe it was uh, 1965 or 56, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. um, Polish researcher Kalski and Frost, they did this um, microwave um, HF um, field levitation of a crystal device. Okay, I've, I'm familiar and with that. George Hathaway also did uh, actually a, a replication of that experiment using a microwave oven. Do you okay. remember what I'm talking about? Yes, I remember uh, seeing those documents. I still have them. Um, I didn't. I didn't repeat that experiment. I would think perhaps George Hathaway, of course, did. Okay. Did George inform you that he got some results, or? Oh, he's already gone. But uh, oh, I'm sorry. But uh, so you were anyway aware of that experiment using microwave? Yeah. Yeah. That's an uh, old experiment. All right. Uh, west of the Rockies, you're on the air with John Hutchinson. Hello. Hello. West of the Rockies. Going once. Hello. Yes, hello. Yes. Um, a very, very interesting show tonight. Uh, thank and you. I'd like to find out, uh, did anybody disappear from that building? If Was anybody in that building that disappeared, first of all? And I have another question after this. Okay. Nope. No, I I was not aware of it until um, my colleagues informed me about all this. I can't tell you, I was not aware of anything myself. So you don't know of anybody that was reported missing after that? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, ma'am? Okay, uh, also, do you have any books or videos that you would, um, people like myself could buy? They're all over the place. Um sure. You know, have an address we could. Write. Okay, you don't. You don't uh, personally offer them, uh, then, John. I try. I, I'm like, I'm, there's film companies that are, want to make a movie on yours truly here. Uh, Miramax. I, I send out so much stuff. Uh, there are production companies in Los Angeles, Harry Delighter Productions, mm -hmm. and they have some of my work there on on video. That's very nicely done by Harry Delighter. 
Is there, is there a, let's try this. Is there a way to get hold of you? Do you have an email address that you can give out or anything? Oh, yes, I have an email address. It's um, hefect at infinite.net. <clears throat> okay. Also, wait, wait a minute. I want to get this. hefect at infinite.net? Yep. Okay. And also... On the internet, if you look under Yahoo Search or Google Search, right. under Hutchison Effect, there's many websites there that um, show my work and tell what's late, the latest things that are going on. All right, so a lot of people can do uh, easy research and get hold of you directly, even if they wish. Oh, sure. All right. I, I love people. First time caller line, you're on the air with uh, John Hutchinson. Hi. Hi. I can barely hear you, sir. John, you can... can you hear me? Just, yes. Yes, uh, John, question for you on your, your work out there. Have you ever, or were you ever to put it on a spinning table of any type to produce this effect? Uh, in that, uh, uh, I know... Uh, Do you mean put the equipment on a spinning table? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. an inside-out motor will levitate, because we've done it here in Pittsburgh with a Ph.D. that was part of the Philadelphia experiment. Hmm. He should be able to do the same thing in that the Tesla effect of the coils in, in the Philadelphia experience, they use four. He's only using three. But the concept there of the coils and the frequency of DC, yes. you should be able, if you can get a table to get up to 2,000 revolutions uh, by its power, it'll probably take over and levitate for you. It's called an inside-out motor. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, of course, other coiling to control it. But you should try it if you haven't tried it. Well, I'm, that's, I'm that's always one. open to interesting um, suggestions. The other uh, is uh, any wood. Did you embed any wood in these different? I saw some of the pictures here. Have you embedded any wood in this uh, fluid state of the metal? And that has any wood got into it? Yeah, there's one on on the website there that uh, there's a block of metal, or sorry, a block of wood in there, and other samples have wood embedded in them that were cut open. Okay, well, that means then that, uh, that a bug or a frog or me could be embedded in that metal, so you reproduce the Philadelphia experiment. That's what I think, too. Right? Uh, well, I guess so. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's impossible not to go there. I, I went there right away. The moment I heard uh, uh, what you were using, uh, it was obviously the Philadelphia experiment, a little different but not that different, and... Yes, with the embeddings uh, that we can see. Mm -hmm. Caller, you're dead right. I agree with you. Yeah, can four coils give you a time shift? Four coils could probably do that. I've seen things yeah. like light appearing, which is caught on Super 8 film, the old Super 8 film, right. light well, the, shimmering things that appeared. Yeah, well, the, the, the sucking up of energy, that's why all this town shuts down. That light effect is the bombard, just like a mini hole. Mm -hmm. What's going on? So uh, you're you're there. If you can get it spinning, you will have the craft and the liftoff that you want, plus power generation. So I hope good luck to you in that direction. Try it sometime. Okay, it uh, works. Always we like did it. it for four and a half hours, so you ought to be able to. All right, uh, John. Are are you going to are you going to take this up again, John, or have you had it? Well, <laughs> what I want to do is introduced in the entertainment industry. Now, also, a lot of filmmakers are after me to sign a contract for doing my whole life story, and I'm considering that also. Um, by saying I've had it, in a way, I felt I feel a bit burned out, and I like my surplus electronics, and, and um, I had a lot of fun working on, on Navy ships, warships that were just um, a half a mile from here, and I would go down there and get electronics and study the ship's I was basically third in command of um, this for artificial reefs, and I was allowed to take anything off the ships. So it's, I guess you need to get re-inspired. Um, I think it would be fun. I'd, what I, My main thing I always wanted to do was give a massive demonstration to one of the biggest U.S. networks, to show this thing off to maybe ABC or NBC. Right. I got in a bit of a tuffle with uh, Triad, Triad Entertainment. Uh, I mentioned that, that uh, I would do that, and they didn't like that, and they started to um, give me some negative feedback on uh, certain things when they aired the show. 
Okay. Uh, wild card line, you're on the air with John Hutchinson. Hello. Hi there, this is Clark 